Welcome to the Morgan Park Academy podcast series, Remembering the Holocaust. Seventh grade students in English language arts and world history studied the Holocaust, paying particularly close attention to cultural genocide rescuers and upstanders and escape and survival. This series will cover various topics, providing other middle level students with the opportunity to learn about the Holocaust. Hi, my name is Brooklyn. And hi, my name is Kiani. And And welcome welcome to to our episode. episode. Like every other episode, we'll be going in depth on a specific topic. And ours is those who risk their lives to save others. We will be focusing on Chinue Siempo Sugihara, George Mandel Mantello, Ho Feng Xian, and Yang Karski. Each of these men did extraordinary things during this time. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you for risking your life, thank you for your survival, and thank you for being an upstanding citizen, even when it could have caused you your life. George Mandel was a Jewish businessman living happily in Budapest with his wife and son. But in 1939, his life changed forever. Nazis were a threat to him and his family, just like many other Jews, so they had to find a way to become essentially invisible to them. But because of his job as a businessman, he had earlier become friends with El Salvadorian Council General Cornel Jose Arturo Castellanos, who two years later invited him to work for him in Switzerland. Not long after he started working for Cornell, he added Mantello to his name to further remain unknown, just in case the Nazis had come after him. But after... But soon after that, Nazis had begun to sweep through Europe for European Jews. Many Jews had begun to do anything they could to survive, asking for money, jobs, ways to escape, anything they could just to survive. And one day, a group of people asked Mandel for money to flee the country. But instead of saying yes, he said he felt disrespected not because they asked him for money, but because he knew that this was the only thing that they would be able to ask for because of the circumstances the Nazis put them in. Mandel declined the proposal, but he said, forget about the money. We're going to find something more direct and powerful to do. So the operation had begun. First, He had to get the approval from Cornell, and once he got the stamp of approval, it was game time. This was not a one-man operation, and it couldn't be a one-man operation. It was way too hard for him to do by himself, so he hired university students to help him. He had began issuing thousands of visas a day, and later in 1939, he contacted the El Salvadorian foreign minister to get people to help issue visas send rescue groups and helpers but there was but there was no way that the uh that the foreign minister would send help so for over two years he had continued issuing visas with that system but in 1944 he had to use the visas to save his own family which he thank god did successfully and after world war ii Mandel was finally free and decided to settle in Rome, but in 1992, he sadly passed away in, 19, in 2010. Cassianos was declared righteousness among the nations by Yad Vashem, Israel's World Holocaust Remembrance Center. He's the first El Salvadorian to be given this honor, and I believe if Mandel were able to see the impact that he did in the U.S. today, he would be so proud. And he is remembered in many places, but one of the places is the United States Holocaust Museum. Ho Feng Shan. Ho Feng Shan was born in 1901 in Yuanying in Hunan province. At a young age, Ho Feng Shan's father passed away and decided to make the most of his education and became a Chinese diplomat in Vienna, Austria. A year after he arrived in Vienna 
anti-Semitism acts began to take place in less than a month later. The first Austrian Jews were deported to Dachau and Buchenwald concentration camps. So he enabled thousands of visas to Austrian Jews, enabling them to escape Nazi percussion. According to the Holocaust Memorial in the spring of 1937, he was appointed. He was appointed first secretary for the Chinese delegation. Shan issued visas to Shanghai to all requesting them, even to those wishing to travel elsewhere but needing a visa to leave Nazi territory. Many of those helped by Ho Feng Shan did indeed reach Shanghai, either by boat from Italy or overland via the Soviet Union. Many others made use of their visas to reach alternative destinations, including the Philippines and Cuba. The amount of visas that were given was unknown, but around 70,000 Austrian Jews died from the Nazis. According to the Holocaust Memorial Council General, Ho Feng Shan's immediate supervisor, Supervisor Chen Jia, the Chinese ambassador in Berlin, was predominantly opposed to giving visas to Jews. He wanted good diplomatic relations with Germany and did not want to undermine Hitler's anti Semitic policy. Having learned that the Chinese Council in Vienna, Austria, was issuing large numbers of visas to Jews, Chen Jia called Ho Feng Shan by telephone and ordered him to discontinue this practice. But Ho Feng Shan countered by saying that the Chinese foreign ministry was able to maintain a liberal policy in his regard. Chen Jia sent out an investigator. He got no information about anything. So he was forced to go back to where he was in the first place. After this, Ho Feng Shan had to be careful about jeopardizing his career. Chenwe Sienpo Sugihara was born on January 1st, 1900. At a young age, he knew he wanted to become a teacher, specifically in English, but he wasn't able to go to college for it because of financial issues. But because of his excellence, he was recognized and was able to take a test for foreign exchange students to study to become a diplomat. Believe it or not, he passed and started working to become the diplomat we know him to be today. After his studies, he was recognized and given a job in Hardin, which sparked his career. And later on, Mr. Sugihara was sent to Kanasis, Lithuania to open a Chinese consulate and gather information about the Soviet Union. This was around the time when Hitler's hatred for Jews drastically increased, leaving them with little to no destination for escape. He returned to Japan And as he re returned to Japan, he was fired from the foreign ministry from issuing visas against staff orders. But in 1940, he was given the biggest ultimatum of his life, and that, and that was issuing visas and saving Jewish lives or following orders, which would allow him to protect his spotless career as a diplomat, and, and he chose to save Jews, giving up his life and career as a diplomat. Even after his career as a diplomat, he continued to write visas for life. After a while, he knew it was time to leave Lithuania and move on. It was time to him for him to start a new life. And his last visa was given 
through the train window out of Lithuania. He had issued over 2,139 visas for life, and for that we say thank you.